Hey, welcome friends. Going to paint on one of our long panels tonight. This is six by 18. Got a tone bright. This should be fun. Before we start, a couple things is, um, I didn't sign this. I'm not completely sure it's done. It's the one from last time, but I was gonna show you. I put in a light post there with an American flag on it. So I think it kind of helps fill some of the negative space. And I suggested the word donuts, but uh, not completely sure. Might do a center stripe in the road, maybe in a yellow that kind of pulls your eye that way. So but I just thought I'd show you where it was now. Also bought in the painting that I purchased recently. I told you last time I bought another one of Chuck Marshall's paintings. So I brought it in to share with you. Let me show you. I might back you out so you can see it. I have it in a frame that I like. You may or may not like the frame. It doesn't matter. There it is. This is an 11 by 14. Um, you know, you buy art that you love, and sometimes it can be completely different than your style. Sometimes it can be inspiration for you. You can study it and learn from it. Um, Chuck is an impressionist, and there's a lot of wonderful loose edges in there. I love everything about this. I love the subject matter. Cute, cute, charming house, place I would stay or live, or I just think it's so cute and the fact that it sits over. There's a lot of interest, a lot of interesting things going on. A little waterway, this little deck here. You know, he's got the uh, light in over here. It's just so cute. His greens are nice. I really like this nice dark in here. Gives it nice depth. And, you know, it draws your eye right there, that light against the dark. Um, so, again, when you buy a piece, um, ask yourself what is it you like about it again i like the subject matter i like the greens and um, even though there's a lot of looseness in this i like how well he explained the windows in the cabin i think that's a satellite dish right there but it's very subtle you have to look for it a little surprise um, so his focal point is more refined which is nice i mean you know it makes I'm always trying to learn and thinking about my process of what I'm doing. Um, that was one thing with Mark Boges when I took the workshop from him. He was loose, but yet he spent an uh, amazing amount of time on his focal point. He, he sat and painted, which a lot of people don't do, so he had his face right in there, but he would really make his focal point perfect. And he was very particular about windows. So something to consider, you know. Maybe sometimes I'm too loose. Maybe I need to tighten up in some areas, at least my focal point. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Don't I just I just love it. May not be your taste, but uh, I'll just enjoy that forever. I've got a couple of his I feel that way about. So anyway, this is. I hope we can get the whole thing in. Even this is a six by eighteen. One of the panels I showed you the other night. I may have to back you up. You look crooked, don't you? So I've got you pretty much in front of it. I've got to be able to see it too. So we'll do the best we can. I'll show you what um, I'm going to paint. I played around with some photos and I, I tried to crop them rectangle to fit this format. This is what I, we're going to do tonight. Um, I've got some uh, city scenes that I've done some cropping too. This is one right up here in the town where I live. And I also um, may go, I'll show you. I have painted this row of houses actually a couple times. But um, I'll show you how I cropped it. I may go out this weekend actually and paint this we're supposed to be very warm and sunny, and um, this is up here in my town, too. There it is, cropped in a little tighter, minus the red brick house on the left. So that's cute, too, isn't it? But I think I want to paint that on location. So anyway, I chose the farm scene, and it's um, not a crystal clear photo. Part of that may be the fact that I've, you know, I've cropped into it, but it's good enough, I think. 
So that's what we're shooting for. Got my computer propped up over here and we'll start off and sketch it on with some dark like we always do and try to get some of those darker values in there before we start. So ultramarine blue is what I always go to and I go to uh, transparent red oxide for a dark dark. And we'll put a little solvent in it. All right. You can see I've toned it to the orange for the sky. I really like all the staggered trees here behind it. Kind of staggered tree line. the foreground we'll try to make interesting. Um, all right, let's see where that red barn lands. The edge of it is thin that down just a little more. Yeah, we actually had a nice day today. It just seemed like it was just gloomy every day and chilly every day. It finally got up to about 75 today. Very pretty. I did walk outside. Didn't paint outside, but maybe should have. There's a pathway where I walk that has a, a small creek that flows through. I, I looked at that with the idea of maybe painting that sometime. And we got a couple silos. And the other one hits about there and it's taller. Trouble with painting on these this odd size as you know is a frame. I'll have to um, locate some frames. I did Google this size and uh, I think if I, if I want to go with a simpler frame I'll be able to find them. Wayfair, have you heard of that? They, they actually had uh, a simpler kind of black frame available. On this, I'm not sure what I'm seeing. There's a gray roof right here, but I may zoom into it. But I like I like um, a, a long skinny canvas like this. I think it you know it's kind of a panoramic view. Nice even just for a, a simple landscape. You know, if you live somewhere where you have birch trees and um, pine trees and stuff, just a simple landscape would be nice on it. And then there's yet another building over here which runs off. I'm zooming in to see what's here. Um, it looks like, you know, you can see some of this peeking through over here, which would be good. It'll pull your eye over there. Hmm. Again, not a real clear photo. Let's go to a brush that's a little bit bigger, so. I'm washing this one out a little bit. And 
not ready to put color on yet. I want to think about value for a little bit here. And the barn is red, but I think I might put a wash of, uh, you know, tone it a little bit. That may be a little darker than I want to go. We'll see. The light seems to be coming more from this side. So that roof is lighter. This, of course, is just kind of green, scruffy stuff, but we're going to get some little color in there. Let me get my little scraper. I said that's a building there. I think I see a little bit of it poking through over there, which will help it to bring the eye over there. This is red too. All right, how's that? All right, I think we'll start with the lightest colors that I see. Could start with the sky. don't you know I know I've been starting with the lightest lights for a while since that workshop 
but I would have never done that. I would have always put the greens in and worked the sky down too. It's normally the way I would have painted. Let's just start with the, the lighter parts of that that we see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right. In no particular order. I'm going to start with the roof of this barn. Um, looks like it gets a bit lighter, a bit lighter down here. That plane goes out a little bit and probably catches more light. But it's not a big difference. I'm going to try a little brush that I used last time. I kind of enjoyed, even though most of my brushes are rosemary. This is a uh, Simply Simmons, and it's it's a softer brush, but. Um, kind of having fun with it. Just something different. It feels good. Um, I did a dog portrait with it the other day and, and I liked it. You can get a very fine point with it, which is nice for some things. Don't want to cover up all my tone. We use that somewhat darker color on that side because um, that's away from the light. I'll put a little tiny bit of yellow in there. Get that a little lighter and warmer. Gonna jump around and uh, this one felt warmer to me, so I put a little more yellow in it. I talked to Chuck about how he needs to be more of an have more of an online presence. I mean, you just do nowadays. You know, you need to be. There are people that um, have for a subscription fee. You know, they come on and demo and things. And uh, um, so, you know, he's he's working toward that direction. I think um, if at some point he does that, I will let you know. You know, I don't know what he'll do, but I know some people charge a monthly fee and then they come on and offer a couple of demos a month. Um, of course, you can always come watch me too. I'm free, right? see what I'm seeing there now that I'm doing this. If that's one building or two. Huh, almost looks like two. Not that it really matters, I guess. I 
kind of blocking it out with some slightly different values and stuff. I thought it might actually give it a feel of a metal roof. We'll see. As I look at this, I feel like this is a little, actually a little too yellow. You know, I'm not across the brush like I probably should be. Well, you know, you're forgetting. All right. Then we got another, yet another kind of light colored roof over here. We might make it, let's change it up a little bit, make it a little more gray. You know, we want everything the same. And again, we're going to suggest some little bits of color over in there. I don't know. Actually, you can't see much of the front of this building. There's just a bunch of scruffy stuff growing up over there. If anybody knows of a reasonable place to buy, like custom, I usually get frames from Franken Frame. They're out of uh, Tennessee here in the United States, and they do custom frames. And I've always been really, really happy with them. I haven't even I haven't looked for a frame yet, but. Um, they're especially nice if you uh, need smaller sizes, like I'll, I'll, I paint 4x4s four four and stuff for shows and uh, sometimes I'll get there, even get lucky and get uh, clearance moldings and get, you know, good prices on them. I said, I really am enjoying the little edge on this brush. All right, like I said, this is the darker. The light's coming from this way. Might need to get some, a few more paints out here. Yeah, like I said, uh, I may get myself out tomorrow and you'll see a video if I, if I do it. Thought I'd take you with me and you can see what it's like if you haven't done plein air being out there. It can just be crazy and noisy and I've gone red with this, but it's uh, fairly dark. Because again, this is in the shadowed side of the barn. And the red barn over to the right is, of course, got the same light on it. So, not that it has to be the same color. I went a little bit darker actually. actually would be the same shape as that. Make sure I get all my shadows in here. And then the side that's catching the light, of course it's going to be lighter and warmer. I'm going to 
kick it up really nicely. We'll see if we like that in the end. It might be, we'll make it warm it up a little bit, it might be a little cool. The little building there is actually um, white, but we're not going to make it white. It looks very cool. Started out light and then got darker. I want it lighter, so we'll see how that feels. You know, it's just too early to judge. All right, let's go ahead and block those trees in. And I think I'm going to block them in with my transparent green, my ultramarine blue, and my Indian yellow. And we'll maybe kill it with a little red. This is the way I, I mean, I know I've been trying to change things up, but this is the way I, in the past, would have always done it. I would have just blocked in the whole mass and then come on top of them with lighter color. So we'll see how that goes.
trying to push some of them back by cooling them off. Hopefully the cooler ones feel like they recede a little bit. That was my goal. Let's go ahead um, and get some sky color in. I'm going to put a few of these while I have this dark green mixture. I'm going to throw some of it down into here. You know, because this is going to be pretty light down in here. So this will give us something to work on top of. I'm going to keep that pretty dark at the base of those trees. does kind of stick right up at the top of that roof, but it does in my photo too. All right, let's get some sky color in there. And as lately, you know, I've been doing ultramarine and white. That's what I'm doing tonight. And I don't have a lot of sky. We may warm it up here where it hits the trees with a little more yellow um, and, and, you know, go a little lighter. I uh, got quite a few followers on TikTok, and I had a Thrive Cosmetics. I don't know if you ever heard of that or not. They reached out to me to, they're sending me free mascaras, and I will do a little TikTok video putting it on and demonstrating it. So, yeah, why not, right? I thought I could do that. Free mascara. This might not be the brush I want for this. I might want one of mine that's where I can scoop up more paint. I think I'm going to switch to one of my rosemaries. And then we don't want to cover up all our orange. but I'm reserving that lower area for to go lighter and warmer.
First, I'm going to lay it in there without getting into the trees immediately so we don't dirty it up. But you could do whatever you wanted with this. You know, you could put a see the orange across there. I mean, you could do a stripe of orange like sunset or. But again, you know, you're making up stuff and you got to know what you're doing. All right, I'm going to wipe off the brush and we're going to try to do a little blending here. By putting a sky color on last, of course, you risk, you know, getting it dirty. But you also can create some soft edges on your trees. I'm going to have to darken that right there because I lost the edge of that silo. You know, when you're painting, you're doing what you think is right, and that's how it works. You know, when you start off and do what seems right to you, and then you correct it if it isn't, right? Again, I find it hard to kind of judge till I uh, get everything up there. You know, we can put some tree trunks in there if we want that much detail. Correcting some shapes. We lost that edge when we put in the trees, I guess. up from it. Looking for my sword. Of course, it can't be the first brush I pull out, eh? Right? 
And I don't even see it. Oh, sorry about that. I was looking for the brush to make some um, tree trunks over there. And I don't even see it. I'll find it later, right? And then maybe later I'll do it. Anyway, I was going to uh, maybe put in the suggestion of some tree trunks, you know. But again, you know, yeah, I'm not going to like them that way. So I'll probably find that sword brush and we'll uh, paint them in. Huh, where it went. But you could just, you know, keep on and on developing this, you know, pulling trees forward and pulling trees back, um, you know, by cooling them off and warming them up. You know, whatever you like, it's your painting, you know. But it is something to think about, you know, the depth in the trees rather than just one solid row. I mean, think about pushing and pulling and, like I said, getting more depth and pulling some of them back. And Alright, let's uh, get some paint on the foreground and we're going much lighter. I'm going to create me a little spot here to mix. Alright, and I'm going to go with my warmest yellow, my cad yellow medium, and my warmest blue, my cobalt and make a green. I'm going to lighten it some with some white which will cool it. We'll see how we like it, huh? a little solvent in there so maybe it'll move around for us a little bit better okay I think we again with this we want to create some depth so I'm thinking the very coolest brightest greens in the foreground not coolest the warmest so I'm just getting some color on there We want to go a little, I want it to recede, so I'm going to put a little more blue in there. I'm actually bumping into you. some of that dark. Foregrounds are tricky, you know, to make interesting. 
Um, and you can do things like, um, here's your focal point, you know, you can do things, create some diagonal lines to pull your eye to the focal point, things like that. But yeah, I'm not going to lie, I mean, it's hard sometimes to make them interesting. Um, that's, the tone helps with that, I think. Um, trying to lighten that up a little bit. Um, the scene we did the other night with the donut shop, I mentioned to you, I thought about maybe putting a yellow stripe in the road. I tried to explain this to my husband. And then I may actually mess it up to where you're, there's a bit of the line pulling your eye toward the donut shop, toward your focal point. I don't know if that makes sense. But sometimes just things that don't necessarily that you don't necessarily have to understand but will help pull your eye. Warmer yet. See, this feels like a building to me, but it feels uh, too dark. In my photo, it's kind of hidden mostly by um, grass. You know, and you can take your rubber knife in here and uh, do some scratching in the foreground, create some grassy shapes. You know, and you could play around and create some actual little foliage kind of shapes if you felt like you wanted. I just don't want it to feel too hard edged back there. And this barn actually, I painted it before, I think. It actually has like a gray doors over here. 
don't know if that matters, but Oops, I just painted my phone. You know, there's enough sky area here, I guess you could actually, um, you know, suggest clouds and kind of pulling it back and forth so maybe it'll feel a little wispy. I showed you that one guy, he paints his skies very dark and then he suggests frequently he'll have a little moon in there. So I guess it's like late in the day. color. I feel like that's a hard edge. to kind of pull a little light across there. There's a gentleman that I paint with bluntly on Mondays and he, he does a lot of um, kind of panoramic landscapes and I, I just really like them. Softening up some edges. There's a lot of snow scenes too, which I don't I haven't painted too much. expose some of that orange which isn't kind of nice it adds a warmth to it there's a gal that I know I haven't painted I used to paint with her and she she always put some orange in her landscapes she felt like all of them needed a little orange I don't know I mean you definitely do that and turn it into a, a bit of a fall scene You know, with a uh, open field like this, a lot of times 
Uh, I painted red barns where the whole front is yellow from, I guess it's ragweed or it's beautiful though. So I threw some orange in there. You know, it's usually wildflowers and stuff growing. in the trees here and there. Because why not? Alright, we're going to look at that and see. I feel like that guy could be a little softer. He's not my focal point. I consider this my focal point. I guess it actually would have been nice if the front was catching light, right? And I could have painted it that way. I think I will take um, my palette. Let me darken this again. Kind of lost the edge of it, I think. I think I will take my palette knife, I was going to say. Maybe hit the edge of that roof. keep kicking you, don't I? It is really crowded <laughs> to get in here. Um, I'm not completely sure of that side, but. that a little bit to hopefully push that back. So hopefully that brightens that up and your eye goes there. All right, that was kind of fun. First time we've done a long one. I got a, I bought three of them. Um, I know there'll be some things that I feel I need to correct, you know. I said it's a quick, <laughs> this is quick. Even if we're outside an hour would be quick. And if you're watching this video, I mean, you might look for another if I get my hind end moving in the morning to make it out and paint, so. Well, it's kind of sweet. You know, I do kind of like the foreground and I like how this tree line goes, I mean, this grasses go into the trees. Got a few suggestions of something um, and this little building is pretty soft now because I want you going here. All right we're going to quit for tonight. I'm going to look at it and thanks for joining me and hopefully like I said I'll get out soon and uh, do a little plein air and you can watch me struggle with that right? And like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And thank you. Thank you again for joining me. Bye-bye.